Good morning, everyone. We're so glad you joined us here this morning for to our online church service. Uh, we'll be uh, continuing with our online services for the next while until further notice. But uh, again, we're so glad you joined us here this morning, and uh, we trust that you'll uh, just enjoy our services here this morning. My name is Pastor Sam, and I want to read to you um, a few verses from Psalm 95. Psalm 95. Come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before him with thanksgiving and extol him with music and song. For the Lord is the great God, the great King above all gods. Come, let us bow down before him in worship. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker. For he is our God. We are the people of his pastor, the flock under his care. Join us in prayer. Father, thank you again for this morning. Thank you that we can come here and just worship you. And again, Father, we know that we are a valued people and that you love each one of us. And Father, we come to you this morning. Father, we just ask that you just bless our service here this morning. And again, Father, we know that you are the one that uh, carries our burdens. So if there's anyone here this morning, Father, that has heavy burdens, I pray that you would just uh, be with them and bless them this, here this morning. And again, we're thankful for his service. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Oh, Lord, my God, when I in awesome wonder consider thy hands have made I see the stars I hear the rolling thunder thy power throughout the universe displayed then sings my soul my Savior God to thee how great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. And when I think that God his son not sparing send him to die I scarce can take it in that on the cross my burden gladly bearing he bled and died to take away Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Mais quand je songe au sublime mystère qu'un Dieu si grand a pu penser à moi que son cher fils est devenu mon frère et que je suis héritier du grand roi de tout mon être alors s'élève un chant Dieu tout puissant que tu es grand de tout Christ shall come with 
Shout of acclamation To take me home What joy shall fill my heart Then I shall bow In humble adoration And there proclaim My God how great Thou art then sings my soul, my Savior God to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to Thee. How great Thou art. Sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art, how great thou art, how great thou art. Dieu tout puissant, que tu es. Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart, as working for the Lord, not for human masters, since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward. It is the Lord Christ you are serving. Colossians chapter 3, verses 23 to 24. Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart, as working for the Lord, not for human masters, since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward. It is the Lord Christ you are serving. Colossians chapter 3, verses 23 to 24. Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart, as working for the Lord, not for human masters, since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward. It is the Lord Christ you are serving. Colossians chapter 3, verses 23 to 24. Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart, as working for the Lord, not for human masters, since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward. It is the Lord Christ you are serving. Colossians chapter 3, verses 23 to 24.
whatever you do, work at it with all your heart, as working for the Lord, not for human masters, since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward. It is the Lord Christ you are serving. Colossians chapter 3, verses 23 to 24. In case you missed it, last week I talked about Sabbath, Sabbath rest. And today and for the next several weeks, uh, leading up to my sabbatical, I would like to talk about work, specifically a theology of work, or how do we think about work from a biblical perspective? All of us work, whether you get paid for work or not, uh, it's something that we all do, so it's something very important to all of us. How many have you seen, how many of you have seen the movie WALL-E? It was a little while ago, right? But it's a great movie. I recommend you watch it again if you haven't seen it uh, recently. But Wally is this robot, and he was left on planet Earth to clean up the trash, the mess that the human beings had left behind. He had a very lonely existence until one day he meets another robot named Eve. And so right away, early on in the movie, we see these biblical themes emerging. We are reminded of Adam in the Garden of Eden when he was left alone and God saw that that was not good and provided um, a companion, Eve, for him. Anyways, Wally pursues this Eve and ends up going on a journey into space and ends up at this gigantic space station. And what we learn is that human beings had left the earth in a disastrous mess and they had uh, been evacuated to this big space station until earth was cleaned up and made to be livable again. And so that was part of this robot's job. And that was only supposed to take several years, but this has been hundreds of years later and uh, human beings are on this big spaceship. They have this carefree, work-free existence. They don't have to do anything. They don't even need to lift a finger because they are served on night and day by, for every single thing that they might want or need by these robots. And so as a result of being pampered through all these years, they now kind of look like big babies with round pudgy faces, big bellies and stubby little arms and very weak legs. They zoom around, uh, never having to walk or even lift their legs to do anything. They're on these comfy, cushy chairs and they're sipping uh, copious amounts of calories with huge drinks. And uh, it's just a result of, of their carefree and work-free existence for all these years. You may think that one of the themes, or the, the main theme, of the movie is creation care or environmentalism. But the producer of this movie, the creator of the movie, who is a confessing Christian, says that is not the theme at all. And as you watch the movie, you'll see many biblical themes emerge. And one of the stronger themes is that um, human beings are human because of work. There are many images from this movie that remind us of Genesis. And in one of the most meaningful images, uh, the tree of life on this new earth grows out of an old work boot. And part of being made in the image of God is that human beings, we, we work. God works. And so do we. So I'd like to look at that theme a little bit more today.
when we talk about God, it's difficult to sometimes put into words how to describe God because God is indescribable just by his nature. But all throughout scripture, we see there are many images that are used, kind of metaphors or similars or descriptive language to help us understand what kind of God our God is. And here are some of the images that have been used in, in the scriptures as they relate to God as a God who works. God is portrayed as a gardener, a shepherd, a potter, a physician, a teacher, a vineyard dresser, metal worker, refiner, and this is only to name a few of them. That's interesting, isn't it? Because we often don't go to those images first, even though they are some of the more prominent images of God in the Bible. I just gave a few. There are many other descriptions of God as a different kind of worker as well. So you see that being made in God's image includes the fact that we are workers by nature. God works and so we work. Let me ask you this question. Do you think there will be work in heaven? Or do you think it's like an eternal retirement? Do you think it might be similar to how it was depicted in Wall E where we are served on? Uh, hand and foot, not necessarily by robots, but maybe by angels. And uh, we don't need to lift a hand. Everything is just done for us. What, what do you think heaven will be like when it comes to work? Now, if you answered, no, you don't think there will be work in heaven, then why not? But before you answer that question, let's look at some of these passages from the story of creation. Genesis chapter 2, verse 5, says this, Now no shrub had yet appeared on the earth, and no plant had yet sprung up. For the Lord God had not sent rain on the earth, and there was no one to work the ground. Do you see how it's described here? What was the reason that there was no vegetation? Because it says there was no one to work the ground. The the earth, the ground needed to be farmed and, uh, and worked. Let's jump ahead to chapter 2 again, verse 15. It says, The Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden. Why? To work it and take care of it. I want you to notice something here. Genesis chapter 1, 2, and 3, it's very foundational for what we think about God and, and creation and, and everything and about ourselves. Genesis chapter 1 and chapter 2 are accounts of creation. Chapter 3 is what we call the fall, where sin first entered into the world, and there is a separation between God and human beings. The verses I just read to you are describing the world creation before sin enters. Do you notice that something about work? Work existed before Genesis chapter 3. Work existed before the fall. So therefore, we know that work, we don't work because of sin. Work isn't a result of sin. We don't have to work all the time because of this curse that was put on humanity because of the disobedience. That's not why we work. Work existed before sin came into the world. So this tells us that work is good. Work was part of the Garden of Eden before it was spoiled, before sin came into the world. In other words, work is meant to be a blessing, not a curse. All kinds of work. Have you heard of Bezalel and Oholiab? They're minor characters, or they seem to be minor characters because in the scripture, because they aren't mentioned very much. But Bezalel, he is the only person, as far as I know, in the Old Testament described as being filled with the Spirit of God. Bezalel's job was 
woodworking or, or laying the jewel, insetting the jewels or doing that kind of handiwork um, for the tabernacle. And because he, God saw that it was important enough to include in his scriptures the fact that Bezalel was filled with the spirit of God. That tells us that work, work with our hands is important uh, to him. Now let's go back to the story of creation, Genesis chapter 1, verse 28. God blessed them. Now we're talking about Adam and Eve, okay? God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky and over every living creature that moves on the ground. I'm sure you've heard that verse many times before. But I wonder if there's something that you've kind of glossed over. Let's just go back. So I want to focus on this one word. Let's go back over this verse again. God said to them, remember, chapter 1, Genesis chapter 1, before the fall, before sin entered the world, before there was any disobedience, God had created this perfect world. He said to the people, be fruitful, increase in number, and increase in number, fill the earth, and what's that next word? Subdue it. Subdue the earth. Think about that for a moment. Why would this perfect creation, this sinless creation, need to be subdued? Have you ever thought about that before? It seems to be saying that within creation, there is this inherent wildness. It needs to be controlled or tamed somehow. And so God has put human beings there to subdue the earth. Why is that necessary? Again, we are created in the image of God to work. Part of that means to work, just like God is a worker. What it also means, though, is that God has partnered with us. He has chosen to, to bring us into a partnership. We, we cooperate with God. Yet, it's important to remember that even though we partner with him, we are not equal partners. God is just so far above us. And we rely on him. We are completely dependent on him for everything. But he wants us to work. And actually, he's called us to work. And yet still be completely dependent on him. Look at Psalm 127, for example. It says, unless the Lord builds the house, the laborers, uh, the builders labor in vain. See, our work is dependent on him. And yet we still work. Psalm 90 kind of says the same thing too. It says, may the favor of the Lord rest on, the Lord our God rest on us. Establish the work of our hands for us. Yes, establish the work of our hands. God wants us to work. He's commanded us to work. It's part of being a human being is to work. Yet we are completely dependent on God at the same time. So can you see that? Just intrinsic to our nature is, is this capacity, not only that, this desire and this need for work. Work is not a result of the fall. Work existed before the fall. In this perfect scenario that God created, he created us to work. Now, let me ask you this question again, and I'll give you a few minutes to talk about this. If you're watching this on your own, get out your journal and maybe write in the sides of the margins of your Bible. If you're watching with your family or people in your household, then just have a little discussion. I'll give you some time, and then I'm going to come right back. But here's that question once more. Do you think there will be work in heaven?
such a cute uh, video. Uh, wasn't that one? You know, sometimes work can be as enjoyable or even more enjoyable than play. It's really good to to teach the value of work, even when our children are young. Work does have value because of the way God created us, because of how he has put things into place since the beginning of the world. But, you know, sometimes um, we can put too much emphasis on work. And so I'd like to talk about that in the coming weeks. The other danger is we can put too little emphasis on work. And I'd like to talk about that on another Sunday as well. And then other times we, we have this hierarchy of some kinds of work are more important than other kinds of work. And that's a danger as well. And none of this can be scripturally supported. It is not what God has in mind when he thinks of work. So I'd like to talk about these things in the next few weeks. And today is to kind of lay the groundwork for that. But I hope that picturing God as a worker, as someone who is a poet or a teacher or a carpenter or a, a potter or a, whatever he is, all those different images of God, I hope that is helpful for you. Because I have heard many times people say that there's a gap between Sunday and then the rest of the week. We, people can can join into the online church services or they can come to per, church in service or worship service in person and then it's all great. And then Monday, it's like a completely other world. There's a disconnect. And maybe we have this disconnect because we haven't pictured God as a worker before. Maybe we don't realize that we are partnering with God, even in our work as an accountant or our work as, as a landscaper or whatever kind of work we do. And so I hope this is helpful. I hope this helps us to maybe bridge that kind of gap that we've had. It's really important for us to uh, to keep our ideas of God coming from Scripture. And so over the next couple of weeks, I'd like to look at that uh, a little more closely. I also want you to realize that all of us are in the same boat here. Some of you may be retired and you think, well, I don't work anymore, so this isn't really applicable to me. Or others of you might think, well, I, I, don't, uh, I don't get paid for my work. I do a lot of work around the home, perhaps. I, I take care of my children or whatever it is. And you think, well, you know, it's not really work. Um, but let me just tell you, we all work. The definition of work and not work isn't defined by whether we get paid or not. Sometimes you may be volunteering for something where, and, and someone else is doing the exact same thing, and yet they're getting paid. You're both doing work. It just happens that one person gets paid and the other doesn't. And so we all work. Whether you're retired or whether you, you, you don't have a job that pays you money. So work is work. I want you to understand that. And so um, thank you for all the work that you do here at Cornerstone in our community. And right now, Pastor Jordy has a special message for all of you uh, workers um, who work with us and yet don't get paid. Hey there. Thank you so much for your hard work at the wardrobe yesterday. And we had a great time making sure that people that do need warm clothes got some. And so thank you so much. God bless you for that. If you would like to donate your time or clothes or food, hey, please contact me at jordy at cornerstonealliance.ca. I'd love to get you involved and we'd love to have your help and your gifts of clothes and food. Hey, speaking of food, As you can see, there's a massive opportunity to uh, help our food bank right now. Our shelves are looking a little bit. So if you would be willing to donate some food to our pantry, I get about one to two calls per week of people looking for some food that are around the community and area. And so it helps us uh, just be a light and help the people in our community and area. Please contact me at Jordy at cornerstonealliance.ca. Thanks so much. Hey, thank you for all your hard work around here. Thank you for helping with things like the food bank and the wardrobe and, and Sunday school and greeting and, and video editing and all these other things. I want to thank you also for your generosity. This is another way that we've been made in God's image. God is generous and so we are too. And so thank you for your financial gifts as well. Right now, we'll take a moment to take uh, to, to collect the offering, and you can do that online. Instructions will be on the screen. But just before that we do that, why don't we join in prayer together where, you're, where you are. Let's pray out loud 
And let's pray the Lord's Prayer as written in Matthew chapter 6. Please join me as you pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Amen. Thank you for gathering with us online today. I look forward to the time when we can gather in person again. We do believe that in person is best, and this is a good second best, but uh, someday, soon, hopefully, we can meet in person. But thanks for joining us, and join us here next week, same time, Sunday morning at 10 a.m. through the link on our website. Let me send you away with these words from Psalm 90. May your deeds be shown to your servants, your splendor to their children. May the favor of the Lord our God rest on us. Establish the work of our hands for us. Yes, establish the work of our hands 